Hi, today's video is going to be about population genetics and today I'm going to explain how to calculate inbreeding effective population size and the variance effective population size. So we are going to use two formulas in order to find uh, each uh, effective population size, whether it is inbreeding or variance. So I would use uh, later these two colors for both formulas and uh, today this table uh, here uh, would help us in our calculation so we are going to take data from this table and this table population of um, lizards at uh, Tyson from uh, 1996 to uh, year 2000 and um, what is the difference between inbreeding effective population size and the variance uh, effective population size and uh, just imagine that in breeding we have when we have small community and uh, generation after generation when these um, individuals would if they uh, breed freely uh, they eventually would become uh, all relatives of each other to a certain degree and uh, this reminds me uh, some um, il villages uh, just about probably a couple uh, hundred uh, years ago where population of the village usually were uh, all uh, relatives to the certain degree and um, variance effective population size so in, in breeding uh, we count the loss of the heterozygosity so when uh, two uh, for example, animals would breed and their progeny would breed uh, with each other. As you understand, they would uh, you they would uh, lose uh, their uh, genetic uh, uh, variability, and uh, such uh, population would become uh, homozygous and many loci. And uh, this also very bad for the uh, evolution because uh, uh, we need uh, uh, variability at our uh, on our genetic level in order to withstand some environmental disasters for example that might uh, um, wipe out uh, population but uh, due to ver uh, variance in our genes some can be more successful uh, than the others and they would start a new generation but uh, imagine if uh, all the population would be uh, homogeneous then uh, one uh, disaster uh, whether it would be environmental or if it is would be disease uh, might uh, wipe out the whole population and uh, we saw such examples uh, in uh, our life for example, Femin uh, of the uh, Irish uh, population, uh, when uh, due to loss of the heterozygosity and variance in um, potato about 200 years ago, uh, the whole uh, harvest of the potato were lost uh, due to bacterial disease. And uh, so uh, the variance effective population size, on the other hand, uh, imagine when we have t uh, one population that diverge uh, into two population, and uh, when two populations separate, they start to accumulate uh, different uh, frequencies in uh, gene pool of the alleles, and uh, also some um, mutation might arise in each um, population separately and also uh, some mutations can be due to environmental factors such as radiation for example or due to gene pool can change due to uh, migration and immigration so uh, here is the first formula for the inbreeding effective population size uh, so here we have n e, so number of effective, uh, effectively breeding uh, individuals, and uh, 
that means that uh, this can be very different from the uh, size census and for example for uh, human society uh, and e about 20 percent uh, because the other individuals uh, the other 80 percent would be whether too old or too young uh, for the breeding and wouldn't participate uh, in uh, breeding itself or even those who, whose uh, age is uh, right they also cannot uh, sometimes uh, participate in breeding because of the some problems in their reproductive system for example and there also can be a number of different uh, reasons like uh, homosexuality for example so uh, on top here uh, we put t that stands for the number of generations and here uh, below we have uh, 1 divided by n0 and by the way this is would be 0 of under generation this would be generation 1 2 3 and 4 so plus 1 divided by number in individual individuals in generation 1 plus number of individuals in generation 2 plus number of uh, individuals in the uh, generation that we call uh, t minus 1 so what does it mean uh, that means that uh, for this formula we don't use the last uh, generation of the progeny we start with uh, generation 0 or generation of a founder then uh, we have uh, generation 1 2 and 3 uh, here so here would be generation 3 4 minus 1 so uh, let use uh, real numbers from our table here so we have four generations uh, 1 2 3 and 4 and we put this number on top and here we would have 1 divided by number in generation uh, 0, that is 140, plus 1 divided by number in generation 2, or generation 1, that is uh, 250, plus uh, number 1 divided by um, 210 in generation uh, in generation uh, 2 plus 1 divided by uh, 26 and the answer here would be 68.9 but we can round this to whole number 69 and this is going to be uh, effective population size of uh, this uh, uh, combined generations um, over the time and uh, if you think that we can solve this problem much easier just adding all these numbers and divide it by 5 uh, this would be a totally different number if we add all these numbers and divide by 5 to in order to find the mean uh, this is going to be uh, about 141 individuals and as you see this is very different number from what we got here so we use this number as uh, in breeding effective population size when we calculate uh, for example in breeding coefficient and uh, rate of inbreeding over the time so we uh, consider that this population has uh, 69 individuals so we count only effective population size not the census uh, so, and here is the second formula for the variance effective population size. Uh, I would use different color, so it would be easier for you. So, uh, an E here, or effective population size, would equal T, number of generations, divided by 1, number in generation 1, plus 
1 divided by number in generation 2 plus 1 divided by number in generation 3 plus 1 divided by number in generation 4. So as you see the difference between uh, first formula and the second formula uh, would be that here we start with uh, founding generation and uh, the last generation would be uh, number 3 t minus 1 but here we start with uh, uh, generation 1 of the progeny and the last uh, generation of the progeny would be here. So uh, in our case we have 1, 2, 3, 4 generations. So uh, here on top also would go number 4. So uh, n e would equal to 4 divided by 1 divided by 250. This is a number in generation 1 plus 1 divided by 110 number of individuals in generation 2 plus um, 1 divided by 26 number of individuals in uh, generation 3 and plus 1 divided by 180 number of individuals in uh, generation 4 and the answer here would be um, 70.73 so rounded uh, number would be 71 so as you see these numbers are close to each other uh, here we have 69 and here we have 71 but still uh, in other examples where fluctuations in size can be uh, much greater from generation to generation so these uh, numbers here also can be um, very different so uh, now I hope you understand the difference between these two formulas and when we apply these both formulas and um, I hope you will do well on your exam Thank you for your attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Goodbye.